All right, as promised, this is the review video um, for version B of the review for day two, again, not till next Thursday, um, over the sections that we didn't get to spend as much time on in class as I wanted to. So we're looking at sections 5.5 five to 5.6, five, which is this last group of problems right here. So let's talk about number 14. Uh, we're looking at a log equation that has, and this is a key thing that I want you to notice, because um, they like to sometimes do these in, in, in WebAssign too. The logs are on all of the terms except for one. One does not have a multiplication connection for the logarithm. Um, and actually, let me, I want to rewrite this. I want to draw with my other pen, not the Zoom one. Um, so hang on just a second. So number 14, because that way I can save it. Um, so this is log of x minus 4 equals 1 plus log of x minus 3. So you may encounter an equation like this where the logs look like they're on everything, but they're actually not. There's a constant term. So we're going to get all the logs on one side first. So we're going to subtract that log of x minus 3 to the other side since it was plus over here. And now this is looking much more like what we see in part 15 here, which is a case uh, two version of the logs. We're going to condense this by combining it using our property. So subtraction turns into division. And that equals one. So because this does not have logs on both sides, um, once we condensed everything down, we have to do the conversion to get it to be into something solvable. So 10 to the one equals this argument which is x minus 4 over x minus 3. Um, 10 to the first is 10. We're going to cross multiply here. So that's 10x minus 30 equals x minus 4. Solve that for x. That's going to be 9x when we subtract this x over. Add 30 over equals 26. It looks like the answer should be 26 over 9, which is a non-reducible fraction. But we have to check, remember, that our arguments stay greater than 0. And the only two arguments we had in the original were the parts that are, remember, inside the logarithm. So x minus 4 and x minus 3. Well, without knowing what 26 divided by 9 is, you may not know if the answer is going to work or not. It's actually only about 2.8 repeating. So 2.8 repeating is not going to work in either one of these. But if it failed in even just one of them, then we know the answer is not good. So this ends up actually being no solution for this one. The answer we got does not keep our arguments of our logs greater than zero. So let's look at number 15. Same situation kind of here. We're going to combine these two logs on this side first. So since there's a plus between them, we're going to be multiplying their arguments so that we can have a single log on this side. Now, if we multiply that, um, you might even want to show your scratch work kind of up here. It just depends on if you want to or not. That's x squared minus, uh, plus 4x minus 3x minus 12. So that's going to be x squared plus x minus 12 equals 3. This is not to be set equal to 3 because this side has a log, but this side doesn't. You have to convert in that scenario. So 2 to the third equals x squared plus x minus 12. 2 to the third is 8 move over the 8, get minus 20. That is factorable into x plus 5 and x minus 4. So we think we have two solutions possibly, x equals negative 5 or x equals 4. Our arguments of our logs have to stay greater than 0, which means x minus 3 has to be greater than 0 and x plus 4. If we plug in negative 5, that is not going to work fails in the first one, so it doesn't work. If I plug in 4, it works okay in the first one, and it works okay in the second one. So positive 4 is the only solution. Okay, let's look at number 16. We have this equation. I'll write it down here. 3 times 7 to the 5x equals 36. I did one like this on my previous video I just uh, posted. We have to isolate the part that has that exponent. We're solving for the exponent. So we need to divide by 3 first. You cannot multiply that together and make that 21. 
This does not have the same base, so we can't multiply and add the exponents or do anything with those. So we would just get 7 to the 5x equals 12. 7 and 12 do not have the same base. So if we take the log of both sides, that is a legal move as long as you do the same base log on each side. That allows us to use the power rule for logs, which says we can bring the exponent on an argument to the front as a coefficient. And then x is no longer in the exponent. That's the whole purpose of doing that. So we're going to divide by 5 and log 7 to the other side. So 5 and log 7 get divided over. So this is the exact answer. I believe they also wanted an approximation. So I would take my calculator and do log 12 divided by parentheses 5 times log 7. Close my parentheses. And I get about 2.84. For that one. Okay, so the exact is when you have it in log form, the approximate is the decimal. Okay, so we have done the first three. Those all came from section 5.5 or 5.6. Let's look at number 17. So I'm going to have to copy it down. Um, I may have to go back and forth for a second. So number 17 was 2 to the 5x equals 3 to the x minus 4. Again, do not have matching bases. Can't write them as matching bases. If this was a 4, we could write it as 2 squared. It would be very simple like what we did in section 5.2. But when their bases don't match, the best way and the, the shortcut way to always just solve these types is to take a log of both sides. So take a log of both sides. That will let us pull those powers to the front. That's why we're doing it. So we're going to pull the 5x to the front of the first log. So 5x times log 2. You want to pull this binomial to the front because it's the exponent, but you want to write it as a binomial in a parentheses because you do have to distribute the log 3 to it. So this is 5x log 2 equals um, x times log 3 and minus 4 times log 3. Okay, all x terms need to go on the same side, so we're going to subtract that x log 3 over to be with the 5x log 2. Then we still have the negative 4 log 3 over here. Um, this part, we can come, uh, pull out the x as a GCF, so that's 5 log 2 in the parentheses minus log 3 equals negative 4 log 3. And if you look down at the answer key, I'm, I'm going to go scroll down there for a second. One possible answer is just to divide that over. Now notice theirs has a positive log 4 on top, but their other two signs are opposite of mine as well. So that's um, why that is that way. Um, is because I solved mine in the opposite direction. So all my signs are opposite. So this is definitely one of the acceptable answers. And this is fine. You can stop here. Notice all of my signs are opposite to the answer key. That means it is still technically the same fraction. Or if you really wanted to do some simplifying, you could. You could put that fourth power back up on that 3. That would make that 81. Um, you could put the 5 power up on the 2. That would be log of 32. Uh, there's no power to put back on top of this one. And then you could uh, turn this subtraction into division. So again, there's a couple ways you could clean this one up. Um, if you really didn't like that negative sign in front of the top part, if you wanted to put it in here, it would flip this to be 1 over 81. So that would also be a fraction. So this is fine and this is acceptable, but there are other acceptable forms of the answer as well. Just depends on how compressed or condensed you want your logs to be. Okay, we have two more and they're both the word problems. So um, Tamika deposited $8,000 at 11% compounded continuously. That means we're using our PERT formula, P-E to the R-T. Find the time, so we're gonna be solving for time, 
required to double her money using continuous compounding, approximate to two decimal places. Okay, so, and that was number 18. So Tamika wants to double her money. So we, right now, if we plug into the formula, we know that she had $8,000. We know her rate was 11%, I believe, so 0.11. And we don't know time. That's what we're solving for. Doubling her money means she would have 16,000 in the future. So we have to kind of figure that out from the word double. If they said triple, we'd have 24,000. So just make sure you know how to find that. Anytime you're solving for an exponent, isolate that piece first if it's not already isolated. And notice anytime you're doing a doubling problem, this always ends up being a two. If I was tripling, it's going to divide over and make a three. Okay, two and E are definitely not the same base. So we can take, and I'm going to show you a trick on this one. I take the natural log of both sides. I could do log base 10. There's nothing wrong with that, but this already has a base E over here. So that's going to make one little piece nice in just a second. We use that idea of doing the log of both sides so we can pull the power to the front. That's how you get it out of the exponent so that you can solve it. Now, I want to talk just for a minute about natural log of E. This has a hidden base that you don't see. Remember, natural log is log base E of E. What do you raise something to to equal itself? Well, the answer is 1. So natural log of E, with this as the argument, is always 1. That's because the base is hidden as E. You don't see it, but it's there. And anything raised to the first power equals itself. So this is a nice thing. If you know that that's one, that's why I take the natural log of both sides. Just makes this part a little easier to type into my calculator. If you'd done log of both sides, you would just divide log of E over and you'd type it into your calculator. It should, you'd have log of two divided by 0.11 log of E. Should still work out to the same answer. Shouldn't do anything weird. Uh, but that's just a little trick and a shortcut. So natural log of 2 divided by 0.11 is about 6.30 years if we round to two decimal places. Okay, so it'll take about 6.3 years to double her money because she got a great interest rate. Um, okay, so the last one is a drug is eliminated from the body through urine. Suppose that for an initial dose of 100 milligrams, the amount in your body after T hours is this formula. So 100 times 0.7 T. What is the half-life of the drug? Approximate to two decimal places. A half-life means you have half of what you had. So if I had 100 milligrams, the half part life means the time it takes to get to half of this. which means our future value, A of T or N of T or whatever vari variable they're using, what are we using in this one? Um, yeah, A of T. That future value should be half of 100, so it's supposed to be 50, okay? So let's write our formula. A of T equals 100, and then 0.7 to the T. To get the half-life, we want to know when does this equal 50. So we are still solving for time, but you have to know that half-life means plug in half of the original amount. When you go to isolate this, you'll notice it turns into a half. Just like when we double something, we divide and we get a 2. So we get a half-life, essentially. And I would take just the log of both sides to try to get that T out of the exponent. So log of a half equals log of 0.7t, pull the t to the front, and then divide by the log of 0.7 to get t by itself. So on our calculator, we need to do log of a half divided by log of 0.7. So log of a half divide of a log of 0.7, I'm getting approximately 1.94. I think they said around to two decimal places. And that was in, I believe, that year? No, this is hours. Sorry, I wasn't reading. This is not years. This is in hours. It's a, it's a drug, not money. So I keep wanting to write years. 
in 1.94 hours, half of the drug will be out of your system. So um, hopefully that helps. That is everything that was important from the second um, part of today's lesson. We did some of 5.4, you know, a lot of the graphing stuff today, but this was the stuff that kind of ties everything together. So make sure you watch both uh, the two videos that I posted in the weekly guide on week seven. Those were just extra examples from notes so you get all that filled out and have it. And then of course, you know, work version A um, and then work version B, but here's the video in case you need it. So have a wonderful night.